welcome to the Knock Talk. I'm your host, William Hall, broadcasting live out of Kingsland, Texas, USA, with another episode of Monday Memoirs. This is a surprise recording, not at the normal scheduled time, but don't worry, the other one will be played in time, so fear not, my little peeps. <laughs> so, Julie Taylor in the studio. Anytime I have friends in the studio, in the studio, I'm always delighted to, um, to actually have uh, get a testimony from them during that time and so she agreed um i told her i promised i wouldn't embarrass her (laughs) much (laughs) anyway so uh so yeah so this is it so we've got another one coming up at 3 p.m central just like normal it's just uh she's going to be heading back home uh to the frigid mountains behind her on the screen um I can't believe you've been there your whole life. That's like, I couldn't imagine being cold my whole life like that. Anyway, so I'd like to introduce you all to our friend, Julie M. Taylor. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here. And I just want to tell you all that William and his family are even 100 times more awesome in person than in the studio. So if you get a chance to get to Kingsland and meet him and his family, do it. You won't be disappointed. Don't make me cry on the street. No, I won't. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Too late. Anyway. This is a five year mm-hmm. or more. Certainly. We've been talking about it for five years or plus about me coming down here and meeting them. So it's actually a dream come true to get down here. So. And us, yeah, us too. I'm and super excited. I need to check something to make sure. Sometimes, okay, it is. It's at the public. Okay, sometimes when I do recordings, uh, YouTube mysteriously changes the setting the default to private and when i don't check it it doesn't actually it's it's live but no one has access to it but it's not like so we're good so anyway um so yeah that's um it's uh it's been i'll tell everybody you're you're like the oldest you're not old we're the the, we are the same age by the way but you're the oldest you're older not by much (laughs) only a few months um but you're like the oldest facebook friend that i have uh you're one of the very first um non-christians that i met and a lot of the ones uh, that i met back then we just you know sp- time and space separates but uh but you and i've just hung out hung around and uh we had talked for a long time to try to get you down here for an mm-hmm. interview and meet the family and uh, and it's been wonderful too it it just, been. yeah it's so much nicer to be you know, to meet people in person and, uh, and you can kind of feel the energy Right. Uh, from their mind, from their heart, and it's like it's really cool. Sorry about my raspy voice. It's hopefully we'll get better soon. Um, but anyway, so uh, well, I'm coming back too. So <laughs> you better be moving. Can't get rid of me. You better be moving <laughs> here. You better be moving here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> okay, so there's there's c- certain points that uh, uh, that I know I don't want to forget you to mention. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a little cheat sheet here to help me out here. Um, but first of all, just tell me um, y- uh, when. When did you first experience God, Wh- whether it be a child or a teenager? Uh, you know, and obviously I'm referring to the Christian idea of God. But right. when when did you say, oh, wow, I think I'm going to be a spiritual person in that okay. regard? Well, um, my family is on both sides, my mom and my dad's side. We are multi-generational Christians, so I pretty much was born into it raised that way, raised in the church. Um, I don't actually remember a time where I actually said I'm a Christian. It's just that's the way it was. It was a lifestyle. It was just a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We went to church. We prayed after we ate dinner or before we ate dinner back then. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was just that was the way we did things. And um, I remember a few times I would pray and ask, you know, Jamin into my heart and stuff like that. But right. there wasn't like this aha moment. Right. It just, this is what it was. Okay. I'm going to insert so. something that's out of place and out of time. This is something I would usually ask you later on the end of the show. Okay. So what would you say to the people, the Christians out there who may watch your video and say, well, there it is. She never actually really experienced the true Jesus. Mm. How would you, how would you respond how to that? Would I respond? You caught me off guard. That's okay. <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I've been asked that question before myself. And I think for me, and I know we're, we're all in agree, but it's just sometimes spontaneously, it's hard to come right. up with things. I was a hardcore Christian. I, um, I was a missionary in Europe. I spoke at women's conferences. I started a church, you know, so someone can't tell me that 
I didn't mm-hmm. experience it because I was all in. Right, gotcha. You know, I was full blown, whatever the church needed, I was there. Mm-hmm. Even if it was, you know, making curtains for the nursery, anything right. that needed to be done, I was there. And, and I did feel like, you know, I was doing everything any other Christian would do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I felt it in my heart and that whole. How old, how old thing. were you before you, before you, it got serious for you, the, the serving in the church and speaking and things like that? I would say I was probably close to 30 before I became an actual leader in the church. Gotcha. Yeah. And, um, yeah, probably 30-ish. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm not telling you how old I am, but it was a long time <laughs> That's ago. That's okay. Everybody knows how old <laughs> I am, right? If you don't, too bad. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're both about 29-ish, so. Yes, yes. That's one of, that's my story. But I act I'm like I'm 16, <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be a tough decision for you to make. Absolutely. So, okay, cool. So, um, the point, the reason why I ask that is because some people say, well, uh, if, if that's not clarified, they'll say, well, I bet she was only saved for a couple of years and somebody misled her away right, from Jesus. Right. But this is not the case. Right. No, it, it was 30 years of hmm. church, 30 years of Jesus, right. you right. know. So, um, the thing that, uh, oh, God, we have so much in common, it's weird. Uh, just a lot of weird stuff. But yeah. the, even this part. The part about what was your aha moment leaving? What what was it? Was it a season? Okay, well, I have two aha moments. Okay. Okay. So my brother is Messianic, and okay. he had been Messianic for several years, and he was constantly telling me things and wanting me to watch Messianic. Just for those watching for the first time that don't know what that means, Messianic, that means they're still New Testament believers. They believe in J-Man. They just call him something differently. But they also believe in keeping the laws the best they can comprehend them to be. So they're still Christian. They're just a different branch of Christianity. Right, right. So he would, you know, every time we would visit, he would insert things and try to get me to watch different Messianic teachers on YouTube and giving me books and stuff. And I was... So he's trying to lure you out of the mainstream Christianity into the Messianic Christian world. Got it. Okay. Correct. But I was putting my feet down and and Mm -hmm. solid that I will never change what I'm doing. This is it. This is this is who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm good where I'm at. And so (sighs) Rabbi Federer is calling. I better I better take this call. Sit tight one second. (laughs) I should put on the speakerphone. Well, you better tell him we're Hi, Rabbi. First. We are live on the air <laughs> with Julie with the, giving her testimony. So whatever you say, we'll, oh, be, I'm sorry. we'll be held against you in court. <laughs> say hi to everybody. Uh, hi. <laughs> I, I'm outside. I'm coming in the... Uh, okay. Come on in. Uh, You're fine. Okay. You got, okay, bye. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> so, so Rabbi in the studio, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so uh, so he's trying to lead you he's out of Christianity into the Messianic Correct. Christian. Got it. Um, but I didn't want any part of it. It just seemed weird to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I remember it was about, I'm going to say 2013-ish. Okay. It was on his birthday. He sent me this YouTube video, and he said, I really want you to watch it. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll watch it. And I don't even remember what it was, except it was some messianic teacher about the Hebrew letters and how mm-hmm. they were trying to connect certain letters with um, storylines, the virgin the... birth, mm-hmm. because it was open right. on one side and it was referring to the womb and stuff like this. And it seemed very interesting to me, but I had this light bulb moment go off, go off that was like, hey. There's something to this Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some kind of code in there or there's more to it than just letters. Okay. So I had this like aha moment. And so I text my brother and I said, I got it. And he's like, you got what? (laughs) He's like, what are you talking about? I said, I see what you're trying to say. And so he was super excited because he's like, this is the best birthday present ever. Hmm. So because of that one video, that got me digging into other stuff. So I started listening to other Messianic teachers and my brother. And there was actually a group that met in Anchorage, which was about an hour away. 
So every Friday night we would go in there and do studying and singing and food and, mm -hmm. you know, with this Messianic group, we'd stay till three, four in the morning. It was awesome. I was like, okay, this is where it's at. That lasted about eight months. Mm -hmm. And it was right around the time of Passover, 2014, where I had a couple of close friends that nice. I was studying with. And they said, hey, why don't you look at Daniel, I think it was chapter 9, it might have been chapter 7, where it talks about the beast with the horns. And um, Somewhere in Daniel. Say hi, Rabbi. Hi. <laughs> is that, okay, wherever yeah. it is in chapter Daniel, he said, compare it to the story in Revelation, hmm, okay, right, right. with the different descriptions. And so I just started digging, and I had this moment where it was like, it hit me like a ton of bricks, and I was like almost panicking because Jesus isn't who I think he was. Right. And then my heart started beating, and I'm like, oh, my seven. gosh, is this— You're right, seven. Is this the— Seven. 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 Yeah, yeah. Right. is this the, quote, devil trying to yep. sway me, or is this really— And so I was like— I need to start looking at this. And I remember I went upstairs to my bedroom and I just laid on my back, put my arms out, and I just said, okay, God, I don't know what you're trying to show me. I don't even know where to go, where to start, but I feel like something's changing and I want your truth. No matter what, I want your truth. Show me your truth. And I laid there and I cried and I was just like, I don't want to be serving false gods. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on a path. I want to make my creator happy, and I want to also, you know, be happy and blessed myself. I don't want to be, be in idolatry. Anyway, so I laid there, and I just said, bring it on. Bring me the truth. I don't care what it costs. I don't care who hates me. I don't care. I just want your truth, and I'm tired of running after rabbit trails mm -hmm. okay so it took about two days okay. and i was like completely convinced in two days in wow two days. it took me three years no two days of studying wow and praying and i went that's it i'm done mm -hmm. i cannot believe in any part of christianity anymore wow. i just cannot wow. do it wow. i was married at the time my husband was not interested in studying, reading scripture. He was kind of, I think the term is Jack Catholic, mm -hmm. where they only go on Christmas and Easter. Oh, C&E Christians, yeah. Yeah. Christmas and Easter. So yeah. um, he had not, he would go to the Messianic group with me, mm -hmm. but only for me. Right. He, he didn't really believe in it, and he kind of thought it was, anyway. <coughs> So I told him one evening, I said, I've been studying and I've been reading and I've come to the conclusion that Jesus is not who we think he is. This was, did you do this in a few days later? Just you, a couple of days okay, after so. I decided that I'm done with it. Okay, okay? Gotcha, right. I was pretty nervous. Like this is a major thing to tell mm -hmm. your spouse and, um, he looked at me and he goes, if you think that you are going to be part of this family and deny, I'm going to try not to cry, deny my Jesus, mm -hmm. you can't. You right, are not right. going to be. Which completely caught me off guard. I didn't think he would react that extreme. Right. You know, and so I told him, I said, I'm sorry, but I can't go back now. I can't unlearn what I've already learned, mm -hmm. you know. And um, we didn't talk about it for a couple of days, and then we did. We started talking about it again, and um, I asked him, you know, were you serious when you said I can't be part of the family? And he goes, yes. He said, I'm not compromising wow. on my faith. And I said, well, I can't compromise on mine. Right. And so we agreed to disagree and to part ways. Wow. Um, it actually was a very smooth parting. We, we still are friends today. That's good. It's amicable. Um, we joked 
when we went to the court and we were walking out after we got divorced, he said, um, wow, we should write a book on getting divorced. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> and so wow. it wow. was it was okay, you know, <laughs> because it wasn't this big, nasty, right, right. nasty divorce. So um, we divorced in uh, 14. Okay. And so I've been studying and learning and... I have all my Facebook friends and and um, watch different and, rabbis and and so uh, for your for your exit it was you said it was around Passover yeah right was there a certain thing about it or did you just within a couple of days you just, is that what you studied for a few days and is that that's what all that information really locked it in or the Daniel chapter seven has got is what got me looking but then a friend of mine said. You need to start studying what the actual Passover lamb is. And so we got this whiteboard and we started making the list. We put one side, we made a list of what the Passover lamb is and then what Jesus is or what they said mm -hmm. he was. Right, right. And they don't match. Right, right. And we were like, something is majorly wrong here, you know? Right. And um, so I would say... What solidified it was Passover lamb not right. matching up. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then everything else fell into place. That's insane. Behind it. Um, I do have to say that um, my family, I, I come from a large family. I'm the oldest of six. Okay. Um, my mom and dad are, are Christians, grandparents or whatever. They, they are very upset. Right, right. That I left our family religion so to speak um when i first came out i was pretty vocal about it and wanted and excited and wanted to show them all and, right. and but it backfired on me and and pushed them away and and they pretty much thought i was just crazy nuts and julie's just doing her little thing she'll be back later you just made me think of something and uh, you're gonna think it doesn't really apply to this <clears throat> show but but we're in the Parshat Miketz right now, right? She just said something that may have been a possibility with with Joseph and his brothers. Maybe when he got the dream, he wasn't like, ha, ha, ha. He was, he was excited about it. Right. You know, maybe that was his whole thing. And it's really mm -hmm. cool that you were so confident in it, that, that the excitement was so just bursting out of you of confidence. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. That's really neat. Wow. Yeah. And, but then... They rejected it. They did. And, mm. and you know, a couple of family members, well, you're demon-possessed now mm -hmm. and following the devil. And my reply is, well, then does that mean that Abraham was demon-possessed? Mm -hmm. right. I mean, how can you even say that? Yeah, right. Because you're reading that part of the Bible, too. So when you read the Old Testament, are you reading demonology? You know? <laughs> But I just couldn't rationalize or reason with them, right. so I decided I'm not going to. But the nope, go ahead. Okay, the really cool thing about it is, 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 I'm gonna say two days before. No. See my my memories because mm, it's, okay. it's been a while. Um, I right when I was realizing that Jesus wasn't who I thought he was, I called my dad. My dad and I are really tight, and um. I said, Dad, I'm seeing some things in the Bible that are not adding up. And he goes, well, I've been studying that for years. And I'm like, what? And he goes, oh, yeah, why do you think I don't go to family Christmas anymore? <laughs> well, And I'm like, well, we all just thought you were being a crotchety old man and being a Scrooge and didn't want to come to family. So wow. He's like, no, no, that's what. And I said, really? And, and he was like, oh, yeah. And I said, well, I don't think. Jesus is who we think he he is, Dad. And he's like, well, I wouldn't go that far. And I'm like, no, you will. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dad, can I read you something real quick? And he's like, sure. And so I got out my Bible and I read Ezekiel 18. And he goes, hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never really looked at it that way. And he goes, I think you might be right. That's cool. And so this journey has been wow. my dad and I That's cool. alone in Alaska 
We can't find anybody else who believes the same mm -hmm. that we do. Um, so we study together and listen to the rabbis. And I bought my dad Rabbi Singer's mm -hmm. book um, and a couple other books. And so it's super exciting <coughs> that I get to share that with my dad. That's awesome. It's good that you're not alone alone. Yeah. Your dad is there with you, you know, and it could be that it could be. <clears throat> Yeah. And recently, I did find a gentleman through Tanakh Talkers mm -hmm. that lives about 13 miles from me. Oh, wow. And so we haven't met up with his family yet because he's busy and I've been busy, but we right. plan to. So that, gotcha. that'll be cool. Wow. Wow. So, so it's uh, what kind of advice? I don't even know how to ask this anymore. Mm -hmm. I usually ask this on every show, but there's so many different spins on this on how this question needs to be phrased. But basically uh, if if somebody emails you and they ask you what would be the number one thing in your opinion um for or number one way that you would encourage them to start studying their bible if they really wanted to get to to make sure that what they believe is right or wrong are you talking about somebody who's christian yes yeah. currently yeah. Haven't, but the, but haven't left it yet yeah I would say get Rabbi Federer's book. <laughs> Where is it? Where uh, is it? Where Christianity is it? in contrast. Judaism and Christianity in contrast. Okay, so right. Start About. comparing things. Here. If if you're a. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. It's, yeah. it's an easy read. It's a small little book. You can't it's, have this one. This is my son autograph version. <laughs> it's gonna put your put things side by side so you can actually compare. Like I'm a I'm a studier. Mm -hmm. I would study eight hours a day. I'd have notebooks filled with notes. Mm -hmm. I'd, and um, but that's just me. I'm a studier. I like to see black and white. I like to see mm -hmm. what does Tanakh say, what does New Testament say. Compare them. If they don't jive, mm -hmm. one of them's got to go. Okay. Yep. And I'm gonna throw the latter one out. Right. So comparative studies. Um, just asking for truth. Mm -hmm. I know I've talked to a lot of people and they they have the same testimony where they just asked for truth. Just give me your truth mm -hmm. and send me your messengers along the way that'll help me find it. I wanted to comment on that because earlier when we first started, you said that you were praying, right? Right, and that you said, "Show me your truth, whatever it is." Right. Um, I that was that's the I think that may have been for me the one thing that allowed me to have my eyes open because I was, because I said the same thing as Lord, show me what the truth is. I don't True. care what the cost, I don't care what it means. And I even said a couple times pointed out, I don't care if it means Buddha is God and Jesus is just a garage salesman. I said, sure. show me, I'm willing to accept it. Just show <clears throat> me the truth. And that's, that's really what I think what really triggered um, some of my learning ability because right. if you're not open-minded to it, you'll never learn it. Right. So you've got to be open-minded, otherwise you'll rule <clears throat> everything out. You have to be, because mm -hmm. and I didn't even realize that by saying I don't care the cost, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the cost was, you know, I lost everything, my marriage. Yeah. I lost family members. I lost a mm -hmm. lot of friends, you yeah. know. But was it worth it? Of course it is, mm -hmm. because I, I'm in the right spot. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. I'm and I'm moving forward and I know that Hashem has great things coming yep. and hopefully one of them is moving to Texas <laughs> yeah right much warmer climate for sure <laughs> at least part-time yeah you know right. get down here several times a year mm -hmm. help with Tanakh talk help you know do some other stuff right right because I feel like that's the direction I'm moving into is is I'm advancing out of um kindergarten mm -hmm. where i want to actually start teaching and showing others that's cool so very yeah. good well julie <laughs> i get so emotional <laughs> anyway i'm just a big old crab baby it's <laughs> awesome anyway that's it's awesome. it was awesome having you here and yeah. thank you for sharing your story with us and um i'm glad you walked in when you did too that's kind of cool we got the uh, rabbi excellent. rabbi federo in the, uh, in the audience here, I'm gonna let you wave at the audience. Say hi. Yay. <laughs> I don't know if I put that camera back where we're supposed to be, but anyway. So, 
Yes, thank you for opening your yeah. home to me for the last two weeks. Yes. It was a fantastic vacation. We agree. The, you know. the wife and kids totally adore you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm Aunt Julie we're, now, we're, so yeah. they won't let me go home. <laughs> Chrissy, his wife, actually said, you know, you could do a load of laundry if you want because you don't want to be wearing the same clothes for three months. And I looked at her, and I'm like, are you inviting me for three months? <laughs> I think she, she did. She did. She was, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So these guys are like family <laughs> to me, and I, I'm just super blessed yeah, to be here. That's and, awesome to meet Rabbi Federo in person and some of the other people that took the time to drive for hours mm -hmm. to come visit. And yeah, that was, was awesome. that was a great meeting. So for sure. I'll be back. Indeed, indeed. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, be sure to share this with your friends. A lot of you people out there have people that are still in the church and things like these, the testimonies can really be helpful. For It was, it was helpful for me. I, I saw a couple um, and then, of course, I had bought uh, Rabbi uh, Tobia Singer's two-volume book set, and then I got Rabbi Federer's awesome little stick of dynamite. Oh, yeah, good stuff, good. man. Uh, <laughs> and and I would it'd be wrong of me not to mention James Wood Jr. has the book Leaving Jesus. That was huge for me in the moment. Yeah, me so, as well. Very good, very good. So, you guys, thank you for tuning in. And, uh, Julie, once again, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. And, uh, you guys have a yeah. great week. Thank you. Let's see how quick I can get my triggers over here. I got two mice, four. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, take care, everybody. Peace. Thank you.